Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome back to uh, the old set. It's been a while since we've been in my childhood bedroom with the uh, command strips just left on the wall with no posters. <laughs> and speaking of being in my childhood bedroom, I am back at home from going to college in the big city. And you know, I, I, I've been nursing a bit of an ego problem. So before I get to my top 10 albums of the year, instead I'm going to do a ins and outs list for 2022, but a music edition. I'm not gonna pretend I'm like a trend forecaster or I know exactly, you know, what's gonna be the cool hip thing next year. But as someone who has to basically work around music at all times doing this for school and for other stuff I've got going on. I, I do think I have a pretty good idea of what's going on in the scene right now. If you don't know, an in and out list is like what's in for 2022, you know, in in pop culture, what's cool and what's out. Some people do what's in for them. They'll be like, oh, uh, you know, taking better care of myself, eating more healthy food, stuff like that. And other people do in, you know, this artist, this movie. Some people do predictions. I'm gonna do a mix of all of those. So I'm gonna kind of do ins and outs and explain um, if it's like a personal thing, if it's a culture thing at large, kind of qualify it. But basically I thought this would be kind of a fun way just for me to get uh, some of my hater on. Um, Cause sometimes being a hater is kind of fun, but also being a lover. Aww you know, put on some stuff that I think is gonna be big next year. Ultimately, I just thought it would be a really fun video. And so that's what we're gonna do today. If you agree with me, like the video. If you disagree with me, dislike it. I can't even see who dislikes now, so I don't mind. But let's get a healthy discussion going in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think is gonna be bubbling up this year or getting, you know, thrown to the wayside of the pop culture landscape. I think I'm just gonna alternate doing an in and out, in and out to the end of my list. And yeah, let's just get into it. All right, so this first in for 2022 music edition, this basically after this, this is gonna decide if you instantly click off the video or if you think this is funny and keep watching. But my first in for 2022 is Addison Rae. I have basically no other explanation for this except for the fact that because she put out that interview where she talked about like listening to Arca and like other music for, for you know, internet dwellers. And two. I listen to Arca, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Cher. What music do I look like I listen to, I guess? That's actually a good question. I think she's kind of gonna get Jojo Siwa-ified where niche groups of the internet just kind of decide that she's really, really cool. Which I think is funny because like none of these girls, none of these TikTokers really have like done anything wrong. They're just kind of de facto hated for like doing their little dances and stuff. But I seriously think all she needs is like one more kind of like completely palatable hit or to do like a Charlie XCX collab. Like if she's on the new Charlie album, like it's over. Addison Rae, absolutely in for 2022. We love the TikTok dancers. Another controversial pick coming in. My first out for 2022 is Phoebe Bridgers. I'm sorry, everyone. We have to give it up. Now, this is one of the ones I have to qualify. Do I think I will stop listening to Phoebe Bridgers? No. Is Phoebe Bridgers bad? No. Is Phoebe Bridgers corny now? Yes. Watching Phoebe Bridgers blow up off Punisher was great. I was so happy for her. But then watching her get Taylor Swiftified, SNLified, Chrissy Teigen Twitterified, sad. I hate to be that type of person because I hate when people are like, I've been listening to this artist since forever. You don't get to talk about them. But like the quirky skeleton costume, like, okay, like, haha, funny costume. But like Stranger in the Alps, every song she's like, I am a murderer and I want to kill and then be killed on, on like half the songs. Seeing her become kind of this like indie, like Claro-esque darling was like really weird. And I don't like a lot of people that co-opted this music. And like I said, this is for me to be a hater and I'm being a hater, Phoebe Bridgers is out in 2022, but I will still be streaming. Okay, next, my second in for 2022 is Chief Keef. Now I know there's gonna be comments, Chief Keef never left, I've always been listening. Listen, there is a difference between you, art you like and what's like popular in pop culture. I think there's gonna be a huge Chief Keef renaissance in the same way there was a Soldier Boy one like two years ago with the beef with Drake. The beef, I know it was one-sided, but you know what I mean. I don't think Chief Keef is gonna need a beef or any drama, I just think that after that last project just came out, which is amazing by the way, I think that people are gonna realize 
how influential Chief Keef was on like a large scale. I know everyone kind of agrees on that. That's in the know. But I think there's going to be a big Chief Keef renaissance. I think he'll have a big hit this year and he will be in for 2022. We are streaming Chief Keef. Okay, my next out for 2022 is Hyperpop. And I'm going to specify that by saying it's Hyperpop but the kind that sucks. Okay, so the problem is when Spotify invented the hyperpop label, they just started putting like pop music that was loud in there. And like, that is kind of lame. I think it's actually funny when like AG Cook or like Sebi would put in like, like a G6 is hyperpop because like that's kind of what the identity of that subgenre was supposed to be was like tongue in cheek, like making fun of pop music, like maximalist stuff. So the hyperpop that's like good, like the people that are actually being subversive and interesting, even the people that are like memeing it to the absolute extreme, like whatever, a guppy and fraxium type thing, that's fine. I'm still enjoying that. And I think that will still be kind of like a cool thing. But all these like 20 something LA dudes that like a couple years ago were trying to like make McGee songs who are now making like really bad hyperpop where it's a pop song except there's a distorted kick and like a really loud guitar break at the end. That's bad. We need to get over that. Stop making hyperpop. Make like actual interesting music. Sorry. My next in for 2022. This is kind of an easy one. I think Gunna is in for 2022. I think that Plug is kind of going to disappear and instead just be cannibalized by Gunna being the smoothest dude to ever rap on a beat. I think that Plug, we'll get to Plug later in either the in or out. I, you might be able to guess where I'm putting it right now, but I do think that it, it hasn't had its real breakout star yet. And unless Autumn or Summers or someone like that comes out with like a crazy project this year, I think it's basically gonna fade and give way back to kind of Gunna, kind of the smooth, just ultra cool kind of rapping. And I think DS4 is gonna be really good. I think that Gunna is kind of gonna fill the void um, of a trap pop star with Travis out of the picture. They're obviously not the same, but I think he'll have a huge year. Okay, next up for out of 2022, NPR Tiny Desk Concerts. Done with that. I think until they start doing the actual in-house ones with an audience, it's just like, it's just concerts kind of right now. It's like little concerts and some of the people are bad and it's like, it's not fun. I think they really need to do another one kind of like the T-Pain thing, like get someone unexpected, not just like everybody that's doing an album gets a tiny desk. And also the at-home ones kind of ruin the whole thing. Cause it's like, yeah, you can have a giant band. You can have like this whole set. It's like, it's cool, but like, I think it's kind of over until they, they can bring it back, which I know is COVID's fault, but like I'm over NPR tiny desk right now. It's just not, not the vibes. There's a caveat to this one, which is blade tiny desk negates this entire out for this year. If that happens, NPR tiny desk is back in. Okay. My fourth in for 2022 is Beyonce. I have no explanation for this. I was just writing this list and I was like, it's going to be a Beyonce year. I don't know if there's going to be an album or if just like we start to love Beyonce again, but like it's a Beyonce year. That was a short one. So I'm going to move into my next in for 2022, which is similar, which is Katy Perry. I don't know if you guys have seen the Katy Perry clips of her residence that's in like Las Vegas or whatever, but the totally campy one, like where the poop is singing with her coming out of the toilet. People are going to love that. People are going to latch on and be like, wait, remember when Katy Perry was so fun and wholesome they're gonna forget that she is whack and cringe and like the cultural appropriation and the like neil degrasse tyson are math and science related people are just gonna forget that her whole image is gonna get reworked and people are gonna love her as this quirky relatable queen this is one of those ins that's like i'm predicting in for the culture maybe not in for myself Katy Perry does have bangers. I don't know if I want to rehab her image, but I think that's going to happen. There's going to be a Katy Perry renaissance. Okay, next out for 2022 is Charlie Puth. I'll be streaming for the album, but he has got to stop on social media. Charlie Puth is out for 2022. Stop, please stop. Next in for 2022, I'm going to go with country music, specifically like alt country. I'm not saying that whatever Florida Georgia line is gonna be popular. God, no, delete my YouTube channel if I ever say that. Specifically, I think Ethel Kane, um, I just love her in general, so it might just be like, I love her, but I think that she's gonna get huge and she's gonna recontextualize kind of the like Lana Del Rey kind of like Tumblr era. She recently tweeted that she hates when people compare it to Lana Del Rey and I, I understand that the music is not the same. What I'm saying is that there's a Tumblr kind of like twee 2013 thing coming back. Um, but I think that the people doing it now are older Gen Z and they're going to do it kind of ironically. And so instead of listening to Lana Del Rey, like 50s Americana fetishism, they're going to listen to like Ethel Kane, like Americana, what a insane 
hateful, crazy place this is, but also like, I love my cows and like, I want to disappear. You know how there's that whole wave of like, everyone wants to move to the country and like get away from their whole life and like whatever. I think there's going to be a big Western thing in music. Western's already been big in like fashion and art for the last few years, um, but I think it's going to break more into the pop space and all the TikTok girls are going to love Ethel Kane. Not a shot to her or anyone that makes music like that. It's amazing. I'm just saying, I think it's going to be in for 2022. Okay, next out for 2022 is I think Tyler, the creator is on the way out. Not in my opinion. I just feel for some reason, something in the air is giving me like the sense that we're going to be done with Tyler just for a year, literally just for a year. My next out for 2022 is Hayden Kanye West. Um, I think that he's kind of on his redemption arc with this like Kim thing. It's like really funny. Um, I also think that people are just like, gonna give up on that i don't know if there's gonna be a full like taylor reconciliation where he apologizes uh, that will never happen but like I, I mean i don't know if there's gonna be a taylor thing where she's like never mind that beef wasn't real i don't think that's gonna happen but i think that hayden kanye west it, it's over like we're done we're over that if you hate him you hate him but i don't think there's gonna be like a campaign against kanye in 2022 okay my next in for 2022 is going to be yeet i think he is the only figure that's gonna make it out of the rage music bubble and not like suck. I've made a video about this already. I'm gonna react to the album when it comes out um, this Friday, I think, or next Friday. But yeah, Yeet's gonna make it out. Um, Trippy's gonna stop making rage. None of the other small rage people are really gonna make it out. Maybe Ken Carson, but I think Yeet is kind of the survivor of that sound. Next in for 2022 is RX Poppy. If you don't know RX Poppy, I, I like, I don't want you to, like, I, it has to come to you naturally. But I think that. Rx Poppy is going to be the next creator that gets yeeted, like yeetified on TikTok. I think people are going to find out about Rx Poppy, realize how amazing it is, and just like only talk about how amazing Rx Poppy is, like Rx wipes in like every comment section. Literally only one of his or nephew's songs needs to blow up where people realize how funny and insane and real it is. Um, and he'll blow up. I, I like can't get enough of Rx Poppy. I think he's amazing. Um, and his music is amazing. His art is amazing. It's it's like problematic. Like, I don't know. He'll probably get like this whole like canceled thing if he starts getting big. But like, I don't know. If you're trying to cancel Rx Poppy, it's like you are out for 2022. Okay, my next out for 2022 is Charlie XCX. Sorry. I sound like the biggest hater with these outs, but like, I think she's going to be successful. The album is going to pop. Um, it's not going to be good. I think it's going to be like lame, kind of like 80s revival stuff. Um, that's kind of dry at this point. Um, and I don't know, Charlie XCX still love her, but like, I feel like her Dorian Electra, like the Rebecca Black thing. It's like, keep that. Still love you, Charlie XCX. Again, this is not hating. I'm just saying culture at large. I think she's out for this year. Okay. Next in for 2022, uh, I think is Ariana Grande. I think that because of that Tumblr revival, I was talking about all of the worst of her music, um, is going to be revived. All her old like doo-wop looks are going to come out, especially because she's going to be in the Wicked movie. It's going to be like the old Ariana Grande, Nickelodeon doo-wop fans and musical theater people are going to like bring Ariana Grande back in a big way. And I think even if that like doesn't necessarily happen, I think she's going to get a bunch, like that's going to happen. And then she's going to get a bunch of hate for like the race <laughs> baiting thing, which like, I don't even know if that's like real, but I can see her just being kind of big this year. A lot of news around her. A lot of people like saying she's the best. Okay. Next out for 2022 plug and B sucks done new genre, please. Unless someone makes something like really good, really, really good. The instrumentation is good. Or someone finds out the best melodies of all time and all their songs are a hit. We need to stop. Plug and B is the only genre on earth that makes me feel like an old head and I'm 21 because it, it literally is all the same. Every kid that's making plug right now has like one song with 100K on SoundCloud and then like nothing else because like they have one hook and the songs all sound the same. So you can just listen to 80 artists that all sound the same. And I think it's not going to last at all. Even like Wyland, like people are like Wyland invented plug and B. I'm like, bro, this Wyland album is gonna be Mike Dean produced. It's also gonna be weird eighties and like synth rap. Like, I'm sorry, plug. Unless someone can figure it out, plug is over, we're getting gun pilled. And my last in for 2022 is Young Lean. I think that 2021 was a Blade year. 2022 is gonna be a Young Lean year. Even if Blade keeps dropping better albums than Young Lean in 2022, um, I think that it's gonna be the time when they're popular enough that all the like Thai boy, 
um, Young Lean specifically stands are going to be like, no, I've known about Young Lean since whenever Young Lean blows up. Already on TikTok, Agony is blowing up, Ginseng Strip's blowing up. There's going to be another like Young Lean song that becomes like a TikTok trend or something. Sorry that a lot of these are based off TikTok, but like it does drive the culture right now. But one of those is going to show up spring, summer 2022 and just be humongous. And like Young Lean, honestly, I just realized this ties in with the whole Tumblr thing. Like Young Lean is just going to become cool again because like that Tumblr crowd of those aesthetics is going to be really cool again. And my last out for 2022 is Billie Eilish. COVID is over. No one wants to hear this sad mopey like maybe not even Billie eilish because like whatever i don't really have anything against her it's just not for me but all the Billie eilish core like we're done we're in like a taylor swift katy perry like we're in like a pop girl revival now i think the whole Billie eilish just sad whatever that's done people want to be outside people want to be happy people want to go back to being like to completely socially unconscious and i think they're just gonna not we're not gonna be rocking with that. So those are my ins and outs for 2022. That made me feel like a huge hater. So I'm sorry if this video like made me look like a hater, but there's also a lot of stuff I'm really excited about for the new year. Let me know what you guys think are in and out in 2022, if you agree with me or disagree, and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you later, bye.